Welcome to Elector Online. Here's actually a really famous example of a function in the inverse of the function. It's actually the conversion between Celsius degrees and Fahrenheit degrees. Now, here is the equation where if we're given a certain value for the Fahrenheit degrees, we will get the corresponding value for the Celsius degrees. So here you can see that if you evaluate this when Fahrenheit degrees equals 68, you plug in instead of F, you plug in 68. 68 minus 32 is 36, 36 divided by 9 is 4, 5 times 4 is 20. In other words, 68 degree Fahrenheit is equal to 20 degrees Celsius. Now, the inverse of the equation is you plug in a certain value for C and you get the corresponding value for F. So here, we're going to plug in this very same value that we obtained from this initial function. This is the inverse of the function. We plug in 20. 20 divided by 5 is 4, 9 times 4 is 36, 36 plus 32 is 68, which is the value we got in here in the first place. So you can see, you plug in what you obtained for the initial function into your inverse, and that gives you back the number that you started with in your initial function. Now, technically, if we're going to write this in an algebraic equation, we use f of x and x. Here's the initial function, f of x is 5 ninths x minus 32. So you can see it's the same equation, but instead of f, we use x. We use a just a variable, the variable x. We plug in x equals 68, we go to the same calculation, and we get 20. So f of x equals 68 essentially means the temperature in Celsius degrees is 20 when the temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 68. Now we take the inverse of that equation. We write this equation down right here. This is the inverse of the function, which is 9 over 5x plus 32. That's what we have over here. But instead of C, again, we write x. Notice we use the same independent variable x for both the function and the inverse of the function, where, of course, when we deal with Celsius and Fahrenheit degrees, we have to go ahead and use that notation. But this is the exact notation we use for the inverse of a function. So what we do now is we plug in the value we obtained here for x, x equals 20. Here we get 20 divided by 5 is 4, 4 times 9 is 36, 36 plus 32, again we get 68. Just like what we did there, we get the very same result here. But here we write it strictly as a function in algebra. We use f of x, which represents y, so to speak, and then x is our independent variable. Here we have the inverse of the function, and you can see you get the very same result. Now, in the videos to come, we'll show you all kinds of examples of how to convert from a function to the inverse. That's not important right now. Right now, all we have to do is realize how it affects what the relationship is between the function and the inverse of the function. And of course, on the first video, we already saw that in order to go from here to here, what did we do? we interchange the x's and the y's. Matter of fact, why don't we just do that here? All right, we'll write y is equal to 5 over 9 times x minus 32. And then to find the inverse, we're going to exchange the x and the y. So we write this as x is equal to 5 over 9 times y minus 32. And then if we solve that equation for y, we'll get this equation. Why don't you try that at home and see if you can do it. Simply solve this equation for y and you get this. I'll show you how to do it on a later video, but see if you can figure this one out. And that is how it's done. I'm challenging my viewers. <laughs> All right, good. We'll go on to the next one.